With us, we have an entrepreneur whose latest project transforms ordinary streets into the world's largest museums and art galleries. Please welcome to the stage the founder of Art Everywhere, Richard Reed. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. I'm having such a mind-expanding experience. I, you can tell from my accent, I'm not from here. I'm from London. I flew over yesterday. And I was sat on the plane before it took off, and I was thinking to myself, I don't quite know what to expect about this conference. But I have to say, I never would have guessed the things that happened to me. I've sort of watched a perfectly framed sunset and learned about sea sponges. I've sat in an early morning woodland and had my brain rewired by a famous Indian doctor. And Thanks to Martha last night, I'm going to go back to London with a recently acquired and actually very comprehensive understanding of how, how to raise chickens. So it's been, a, it's been extremely sort of a uh, good few hours so far. So kudos to the person who programmed it. But yes, I've been asked to talk about art everywhere. And I guess some of you will be asking, what is this? Well, it's actually going to go into this year's Guinness Book of Records as being the world's largest art show. It's something that I started a couple of years in, ago in London. And launched for the first time in America this year. And I guess it's one of the many, many things I love about America. When America does something, it does it brilliantly well. So you guys did it bigger and better and got more behind it than I ever could have hoped for. But to give you a little a bit of understanding what this actually is, it is essentially, it's a very simple proposition, quite an altruistic proposition. Some could say naive, some could say innocent. But it's essentially about wanting to flood our streets, our public places, our lives with art. It's all about taking over those things that are actually omnipresent, that are ubiquitous on any high street, any main street, in both in the UK, in the USA, and across the world, which are advertising posters, which, of course, were designed and put there to convey commercial messages. But actually, what they really are, they're just a picture frame. They're just an opportunity to communicate with the nation at large. And I guess one of my reflections was, well, why does it have to be just commercial messages? Could it not be other messages? Could it not be art? Could it not be philosophy? Could it not be values? And that was one of the sort of going in points, but essentially exists for no other purpose than this, for a pure, unadulterated, joyful celebration and love of art. In terms of the why and where does it come from, it actually started from a very, very tiny, I guess, synapse firing. I used to walk down a road in London every morning to work. It's called the Goldhawk Road. You guys probably won't know it, but it's not a particularly nice road in London. It's essentially characterized by some derelict buildings and an unbelievable amount of fried chicken shops. But as I walked down it one day, I noticed someone, I don't know who and I don't know why, put up a little beautiful bit of art on a public-facing wall. And it just caused me a moment to stop and to reflect. And I looked at this thing that was just beautiful and unexpected, and it just gave me a little lift on the way into work. And as I realized I was benefiting from that on the sort of day-to-day -day basis, I thought, well, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could have that everywhere? And that was the going in point. And as I said, advertising posters actually then became the medium by which we could put beautiful bits, little bits of art in places where people aren't expecting it, so it infiltrates and infuses people's day-to-day. -day. It also, because it's always got to be the art of the country, I think it's a way for a country to celebrate its creative legacy, to promote it, to, to revel in it. And it's always art that's owned by the country. This isn't about promoting work that's in private collection. There's something ultimately very democratic about it. It has to be of the people, by the people, for the people. And I think there's another reason for doing it as well, which is, you know, I am myself actually not from the art world. I'm a juice entrepreneur. And I read a fact, and I don't know if it's the same in the US, but in the UK, less than 10% of the population go to an art museum in a typical year. And people that go to art museums are the people that go to art museums, but the mass majority of people don't. But one of the reasons why we are all so connected to the world of art, the reason why we're here, is we believe it's universal, it's human, that we all benefit from seeing it. And so this was an idea, an opportunity, to get the average person who's on the street that doesn't go into the gallery to solve that problem the other way around, to take the art out of the gallery and onto the street. But ultimately, I just believed in the idea of it just to create a bit of joy, little joyful disruptions things that you would come across on your day-to-day -day life, things at the bus stop, um, things you see when you're driving on the way into work. These are all from this year's campaign, by the way, in America. Out when you're shopping. I, mean, I love this. It was one of my favorite pictures. I think there's just something so brilliant about this sort of innocent, slightly petulant 
you can go looking down in a slightly disapproving way as we go about buying our spray on tans and Pringles and you're just getting it into places where you wouldn't typically see it. It's on the bus, again, out in the street, just so it infiltrates our day-to-day -day life. At the station, one of my favorite settings of, again, twisting what art can be, where it can be seen, how to use those mediums that typically be trying to get us to, to buy something. In the city, all around, you can see how, you know, I said in America, you guys did it well. You did it big and bold and proper. But also, not just in cities, but getting into the middle of absolutely nowhere. There was just a sense of art is universal. Let's get it seen everywhere we possibly can. I also think something about seeing it at scale as well. We've heard so much about you can see art now on your little phone. Brilliant. I'm for anything that gets us to see more art. But I also like seeing something at 100 times the original scale. Of course, it's not better than going to see the original. This is instead of. This is definitely as well as. But a new way to appreciate art in this sort of bold scale, uh, 100 times the original size. I was just going to talk quickly about the how it's done, because I think there were some principal steps which made it all possible. The first, of course, it actually exists to, the, to actually the amazing support of the outdoor poster industry, both in the UK and the US. They're the ones who provide the posters for free. It was a really cheeky ask. I went to them and asked them, could I have 30,000 poster sites for free in the UK? And they sort of didn't take me seriously at first, but when they realized I was being serious and explained the benefits, they donated it. So, 30,000 poster sites in the UK exhibiting art, which meant 95% of the population in the UK saw it in its second year. In the US, you guys came up with 50,000 poster sites, coast to coast. Not quite the same penetration, but as a first year, a really brilliant place to start. So you have the posters to begin with. That's our medium, our aperture in which to show the art. Then we work with brilliant museums and create a long list of some of the most significant art that we believe to be in public collections of each country. And then, actually, it was just an interesting, that last debate that you started there, Chad, about the curator and the audience. Well, I think it's both. I think what one of the great things about it is the audience is part of the curating team. We have to be guided. We have to put up that long list of, here's 100 brilliant bits of art. But then the public themselves go online and vote for the ones that they want to see. So it's a convergence of curation to guide, but having audience decide. And then it appears, as I said, on 50,000 poster sites all across the country in all different places and formats. And then we use all the sort of the tools of PR and everything you use in marketing just to drive social engagement. CBS did a brilliant four-minute piece all about it and do what we can to get people to not only hear about it, but then use technology to deepen the experience. So it meant that thanks to an app called Blipper, if you held up your smartphone in front of any of the pieces of art, it would recognize it and then tell you the name of the piece, the, art, the artist, where you can go and see the original, and in some cases play a little film about the artist. There's an interactive map so you can go and see your favorites and click on any of those, and again, it'll tell you everything about the piece and where you can go and see the original. Did it achieve anything? Well, I'm a businessman, and I just wanted to resist this whole thing of having KPIs and objectives. To me, the objective was to get art out there, to get it as many places as possible. But yes, there are some things you can measure in addition to that. It got over 1,000 pieces of coverage in both national and international media, which in itself then supports the next year. That's how it happened in the US, because when we did it in the UK two years ago, it got picked up internationally. On the back of the show in the US, we now have India, Russia, China, Argentina, Austria, and Poland wanting to hold their national outdoor art exhibitions next year. So I think in itself, it happening encourages more people to show more art. Uh, we had over 60 million impressions through social media, people tweeting it, Facebooking it, people taking photographs of their own arts, engaging to the extent they're starting to create their own artworks themselves. And then probably the best fact in terms of actually will this hopefully shift the dial of getting more people into museums, 79% of American adults that saw it said that they were now much more likely to go and visit an art museum as a result of seeing the work. So hopefully that's given you some sense of it. As I said, it's just a, it's a brilliant thing to be able to see something that started in London that went national and now has got international and now is going to go global. So uh, thank you very much for the support of it. And something I've always wanted to say, God bless art and God bless America.